Thank you all very much for joining and we'll now start our session. Okay, uh, recently I did post a video on the channel on using QDA minor light for uh, writing literature. QDA minor light is uh, basically a software that is uh, more or less used for qualitative data analysis. But more or less all qualitative data analysis softwares will let you do uh, searching from the documents when you are searching from the documents or when you are writing your literature you have um, say hundreds of papers now, in order to extract critical information from those hundreds of papers there are two ways or rather three ways one is to read them all Second, the second is use a reference management software and the third one is to use qualitative data analysis softwares like, like uh, QDA Miner or uh, uh, Atlas or NVivo. The reason that I used QDA Miner to do that particular video is uh, that it did what other software as far as NVivo or uh, Atlas to the best of my knowledge are concerned they couldn't do. They, you, they, they could search in a single sentence uh, using multiple phrases or words. So that's why I liked QDA Miner. So you can use QDA Miner to search for literature in uh, those hundreds of documents when you are writing your literature. So we'll have a look at that as well if we get time. Otherwise, the video is already there. You can have a look or we can uh, answer. I, I can answer some of the questions relevant to that. So in order to download QDA Miner, what you can do is just go to QDA Miner, uh, just go to Google and write QDA Miner Lite. And the first link, just click on it and you get to their website. What you need to do next is, once it's, it loads, the next step is, you just write your first name, give your last name, give your email, confirm your email and they'll take you to the download uh, page. Just download the software, install it, and it's very easy to use. So we'll be coming back to the software later. But before getting to the software or discussing the software, let's discuss um, briefly what is qualitative data analysis and the key ingredients of quality da qualitative data analysis, the approach that one should have towards qualitative data analysis. So qualitative data analysis theory and how to using QDA minor light. Uh, my name is Khwaja Fawad Latif. I am assistant professor at Department of Management Sciences in Komsets University, Islamabad, Atak campus. I've uh, got some publications in uh, international journals, pri primarily in uh, Journal of Enterprise Information Management, Corporate Social Responsibility and Environmental Management, Total Quality Management and Business Excellence, a Journal of Hospitality Management Studies in Higher Education, and uh, one of our paper is uh, coming in Journal of Knowledge Management pretty soon because it is accepted now. Uh, I've got some experience with the uh, quantitative uh, research using SPSS, Smart PLS, AMOS, M. Uh, are uh, fuzzy sets qualitative comparative analysis atlas.ti and qda minor you can search me on google using khwaja fawad latif or uh, in on pablos by the same name now what are the contents for today's session we'll be looking at what is qualitative research the process of qualitative research concepts and codes an introduction to QDA minor light, building codes in QDA minor, building themes or categories in QDA minor, searching texts in QDA minor and merging codes. So what is qualitative research? Let's start with the introduction. Collecting information which researchers call data is only the beginning of research process. So it's not the end of it, it's just the start because what follows is the detailed analysis of your data complemented by the discussion and implications of your research and the conclusion that you draw from that particular qualitative research or the data, be it quantitative, be it qualitative. Once that you have collected the information, it has to be organized and thought about. Now, quantitative analysis uses data to pro provide answers which can be expressed numerically. However, 
in qualitative research which this paper or this study discusses or this webinar discusses is more concerned with the meaning of the data rather than assessing the data numerically in qualitative research you are more interested in the meaning of the data as to what it means data is a word which describes valid information that can help a researcher answer his or her questions it can come from many different sources so your data can in an org it come it can come from customers it can come from organization it can come from employees it can come from community general public or any other person group group of people that can provide relevant information or data or answers to your questions notes observation interview tapes survey questionnaire all and transcripts are all sources of your data now what is or how quantitative research compares to qualitative research before i get down to the differences let me give you an example for instance if i ask you a question rate your level of satisfaction with the university that you studied in uh, the last time from 1 to 10 so my question is rate your level of satisfaction from the university you last studied in from 1 to 10 now in this particular question what i have done is i i have limited your response to a range of numbers from 1 to 10 and if i want to measure your satisfaction you can only express your satisfaction in numbers from 1 to 10 where one is least satisfied and 10 is most satisfied now the limitation of this kind of question is that you cannot express your satisfaction in greater detail you might say that yes i am satisfied with the teaching but i am not satisfied with the administrative stuff you can say that i am satisfied with the resources provided but i am not satisfied within the resources i am satisfied with the computer lab but i am not satisfied with the library you do not have this liberty in quantitative research so you cannot associate meaning uh, to the data in greater detail but in qualitative research my question would change and my question would be like express your level of satisfaction with the university you last studied in now here you have an open playing field where you can explain your level of satisfaction what is your level of satisfaction why is this your level of satisfaction what are the key contributors to your level of satisfaction so your explanation is through words in quantitative research your explanation is through numbers in quantitative research it's more objective so if i take a mean for say 300 respondents the mean would be same if i take it from any software or whosoever takes it but in qualitative research my analysis of the responses would be different to the analysis of someone else maybe in the same university so the analysis is subjective in quantitative research it's deductive reasoning you actually answer the questions or achieve the objectives of your study by proposing hypothesis whereas in qualitative research it's not the theory testing it's actually deriving or proposing a theory inductive reasoning you've got predefined variables and measurement in quantitative research whereas in qualitative research it's extraneous variables or creativity you might create new variables you do not have predefined variables you may get new variables as you move in as you analyze your data in quantitative research data collection is done before the analysis so you have to complete your data collection once you have or once you think of going towards the analysis whereas in qualitative research the data collection and analysis is inter intervened or intertwined what you do is you collect the data and you keep on keep on analyzing the data as you go along and collect the data and this actually can take us to the sampling process of qualitative research in qualitative research you actually stop collecting data 
once there is very little or no variances left once you are collecting data. So you're not getting anything new out of the interviews or focus group discussions or surveys or uh, maybe anything, that, that any method that you are using to collect the data. So it's the same old, same old coming in. People are saying the same old thing that others have said. So you stop collecting the data. In quantitative research, we are primarily focused on cause and effect, relationships. That's why we use regression or correlation. In qualitative research, we are focused on ass assigning description or meaning to what people have said. So what are my interview questions? One of the problems that I have witnessed uh, during the course of uh, qualitative research that people actually encounter is that they do not have the right interview questions asked. What they do is uh, they actually fail to understand that how your interview questions or where from, from where your interview questions come. The first thing that you should do is in any kind of research, be it quantitative, be it qualitative, it should be to develop an understanding of stakeholder perception of university social responsibility. This is one of the purpose. So the first thing is that you should develop a clear, concise, concrete research purpose. So what is the aim of your research? What is it that you want to do through this research? What is the purpose of your research? It has to be very clear, concise, concrete and complete. In this case, the example is to develop an understanding of stakeholder perception of university social responsibility. So how do stakeholders understand and perceive university social responsibility? The research question based on this purpose is what are the characteristics, attributes of university social responsibility? How do stakeholders uh, attribute university social responsibility. What do they think that are the key characteristics of university social responsibility? Now, in order to complement this research question, you have to draft your interview questions or uh, questions or interview protocol for your focus group discussion. In this case, what I did for my study was that I drafted seven questions, seven interview questions. The first one was asking, what do they think? What is social responsibility to them? What do you think is social responsibility of a university? What do you think are the main determinants of a university social responsibility? Is, universe, is your university socially responsible? Provide reasons. What do you think university should be? Why do you think, sorry, uh, university should be socially responsible? What responsibility does the university has towards its faculty member or students? What do you think are the characteristics of a university that is socially responsible? You might think that some of the questions seem repetitive. Well, uh, the reason I do this is that uh, if I ask this, the, the same question and they think that this is the same question, they could they, they normally mention that, okay, it's the same as you asked earlier. So, so But sometimes uh, there is a repetition because they might understand one question better than the other. So it's the wording. Just to give them the space to answer since you need their responses to analyze. So what is the analysis process? Analysis describes an iterative process, something that you uh, do again and again as to how to go from messy data, something you've got like 10, 20, 30 interviews. Now, how do you actually make them make this data make sense? How do you code it? How do you draft themes from this? So the process actually involves the following steps. First, and really important, do not jump to analysis of the data. Familiarize yourself with your data. How do you familiarize yourself with your data? Read the interview transcripts. If you have, uh, haven't got the interview transcripts yet and you've got the recording, hear the recording again and again. So you know what you are hearing to. So you know what you've got in your hand. Maybe reading it twice or thrice or four times would be a good idea. And this way you would be able to map the whole process or map the whole data in your mind. You will be able to understand, okay, these things I see that everyone has talked about these things. These events, these issues, these problems, uh, these um, participants or these factors, everybody is talking about these. 
and then while you are reading them or while you are talking about them or while you are discussing them or while you are hearing about these things what you can do is and in your mind this is this is how the mind will work in qualitative research in your mind you will be actually combining different factors into categories or you you may call them themes and this is this is why this is very important to familiarize yourself with your data without this your whole process will get flawed and you will have trouble uh, doing this analysis and uh, i have personally tested this process uh, before i go for my analysis of qualitative data what i do is i read my interview transcripts or recordings at least 3 to 4 times just to know these are the questions i asked and these are the responses so i know okay these are the responses that are critical to answering my research question and these are the responses where respondents actually did not provide adequate information so i can negate these responses maybe organize the data and we'll be looking at how to organize the data soon so you actually bring your data together bring put them bring the data together after obviously once you have familiarized familiar, familiarize yourself with the data you can actually remove something that you think it's actually does not answer any of the questions or the interviewer or uh, sorry the interviewee did not answer the questions in the right manner assign preliminary code to your data in order to describe the content how do you assign these preliminary codes how does this coding process work we'll be looking into uh, in a greater detail at this search for patterns or themes you can group the codes together to identify themes in your interviews name and define themes this is very important how do you name them how do you define them we'll be looking at that as well and relate the themes together do not just like identify the themes or codes without identifying the relationship between these codes and themes this is a very wrong manner in which we normally do our anal analysis of qualitative data so you need to bring the themes together relate them so that they can come together in and actually serve the purpose or or achieve the purpose of your research and finding possible and plausible explanation for the, your findings so you have to now discuss the results this is again very important how do you find plausible explanation for your findings go back to the literature go back to the theory now how do you familiarize yourself with the data we'll be focusing on analyzing data from one to one individual interviews focus group discussion and uh, that is one of the example in your in this uh, particular session so now that you've got the data start the analysis process by getting to know your data how do you get to know the data read the data or read the interviews if you've got the transcripts listen to it if you've got it in audio at least two to three times so that you know okay this is what i've got uh, in my head and while you are listening you will be able to identify okay these are the patterns or this is a particular pattern emerging in the data these are the particular issues these are the particular codes themes issues problems that are coming in uh, the data so it's very important that you actually focus on these things read your data or read your interviews rather moving on organize the data now how do you organize the data while you are reading through it it's obviously if you are listening to it is better to transcribe the data always a good idea but if you do not have the means to transcribe the data you will have to hear it all over again and again uh, but it's always a good idea to transcribe the best way to organize your data is to go back to your interview guide what questions did you ask who did you ask these questions what were their responses what were the key ideas that actually emerged from those responses do you want to take any notes it's always a good idea to take notes or make comments because obviously while you are reading through it ideas will come to your mind you will think okay these themes or these themes could emerge from this these particular responses so it's always a good idea to take notes now assign preliminary codes how do you assign preliminary codes now what is actually coding a code is a qualitative inquiry is most often a word or a short phrase or uh, that symbolically assign a summative salient 
uh, a sense capturing and or evocative attribute for a, a portion of the data what is a code actually a code is a word it's a short phrase that you assign to a particular sentence a particular issue a particular problem a particular concept a particular event uh, from your qualitative data for example or actually we'll be looking at examples later so just let's go through this text first now what you are doing through coding is you are actually indexing or categorizing the, the text in order to establish a framework of thematic ideas so you cannot establish themes unless or until you code your data unless or until you identify critical aspects in your qualitative uh, interviews or your interviews so coding is a way of identifying critical aspects the information that is very necessary something that will lead to your uh, uh discussion something that is will add to attainment of the purpose of your study in qualitative research coding is how you define what the data you are analyzing are is about or are about coding is a process of identifying a passage in the text searching and identifying concepts and finding relationship between them it's not just that you highlight okay these things are important Coding is not just identifying these aspects or ident are important or these three four passages from these two three respondents uh, actually relate to say uh, ethical aspects of university or these three four passages relate to community engagement of a university. It's about finding relationship between those passages as well between those codes as well. Therefore, coding is not just labeling of the text. It's about linking the data to the research idea and back to the other data. The codes which are applied enable you to organize the data. So coding is a method to organize the data so you can examine and analyze them in a very structured way. And for start, how do you define your codes or how can you define your codes? For starters, what you can do is you may develop codes based on your interview questions. So you've got interview questions and you think that, okay, these are the aspects that I've asked for in my interviews. So you can look into those aspects, but do not limit uh, your coding to your interview questions. How to avoid this? Read or listen to your interviews. Now what to do? Read the whole text maybe over and over. Now, how do you code? Read it again and again. I've said this or hear it again and again. See what it says. What is it about? Why is it this important? You are reading through it and you think that this particular text may be important because obviously this particular text talks about uh, what is the purpose of your research or this particular text is a key feature as to the, 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 the question that was asked. Are there any similarities, a text relevant to a particular concept, issue or event? So you highlight the particular concept, the particular issue, the particular event. Now why, how do you know that this particular concept, issue or event is important? If this particular concept, issue or event is related to your overall research question or the purpose of research. Can I group the concepts, issues or events? And if you can good, group them together or identify a code for them, that is very good. Are there any keywords? This is very important. While you are reading through your text, while you are reading through your uh, interviews or listening to them, you will find that there are particular words that are being repeated by each of the interview. So those are your keywords. And then you can use these softwares that we are going to um, use later for automatic coding. Retrieve all texts that use these particular words. So it will save you time. Review. Are any codes reappearing? Could they be combined? This is particularly important. And yes, the codes will reappear because that's the primary purpose. You have to identify this is something deliberate. We'll be talking about this later as well. Don't worry about too many codes. Obviously, when you are starting, you will obviously have too many codes, maybe 20, 30, 40 codes. But then with time while you are again, it, since it's an iterative process, while you are going back again to your interviews, something you will find, okay, these two codes could be merged together or these three codes actually to, are talking about same thing 
for example system procedures rules and policies initially you have given four codes but later you identify well it's these four things are the same system procedures rules and policies actually could be uh, rules and regulation so one code obviously these four codes combined into one now here is a sample here is an example what i did was i did a study or rather uh, a friend of mine did a study and asked about the problems that university teachers are facing particular to uh, the tenure track system in pakistan so while i was reading through this particular text i identified that uh, let me read through it well there are few things that are being implemented in pakistan in universities particularly in public sector university there are two parallel system so this particular text or sentence is very important that public sector universities there are two parallel systems initially my idea of tts was a kind of model service structure for teachers for attracting those people who were more interested in research the next uh, rather than teaching and incentivize them and let them work in the university partially with teaching but their more focused would be on research that was my idea about tts and later then i also have heard about tts teachers usually used to get high pay so these particular sentences actually what you do is you cannot code or uh, obviously you will code the whole sentence or quote the whole sentence but in order to identify this particular quote what you do is you give it a code so what i have done is i found that there is to, the 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 respondents are talking about parallel system they are talking about service structure they are talking about research then they are talking about pay and benefits they are talking about uncertainty and they are talking about anxiety and yes this particular thing is or this this particular code can have many codes or many sentences for example even in this single paragraph there are two sentences about research so this particular code research will have two sentences one about this more interested in research or the whole sentence and the next thing is about research environment so a code will have multiple sentences multiple quotations and in order to identify or group those sentences what you do is you identify codes just to represent those sentences moving on what is the process of coding so in the above example we have assigned the data some unique codes Uh, and these are or feel unique because uh, short length of the text but when you are conducting the whole analysis for the 10 or 20 interviews that you have done uh, you will see that these things will repeat every other respondent might have talked about the same thing so obviously you can use those quotation and put it in that particular quote in larger and complete data set you will find that several to many of the same codes will be used primarily or repeatedly for example every other uh, person would have talked about research environment maybe in a different manner but they will be focusing on research environment so what you can do is you can put all those quotations there whereby they are talking about research environment into the code of a research environment or when they are talking about system or parallel system or disadvantages of parallel system or when they are talking about pay and benefits they might have talked about pay and benefit in different manner but actually they are talking about pay and benefit so what you can do is you can obviously put it in the same code this is both natural and deliberate why it's natural and why it's deliberate natural because there are mostly repetitive patterns of actions and consistencies in human affairs if you are in a single system if you are working as a tts professor or if you are working as a university lecturer in a university uh, so you will have a certain perception about uh, university social responsibility and more or less the same perception or maybe to a certain extent maybe different perception will be shared by different lecturers so there will be certain amount of repetition deliberate because one of the coders primary goal pri uh, primary goal is to find these repetitive patterns of actions and why do you want to find these repetitive patterns 
because when you are discussing your findings, you will talk about these uh, repetitive uh, patterns. You will talk about that, yes, respondent A complimented respondent B. Or respondent A, B and C actually talked about this issue. This highlights the need of uh, this particular issue, problem or concept. And consistencies in human affairs as documented in the data. So we'll be looking at the example of um, a write-up as well after the coding and themes emerge. So you'll, you'll understand that better over there as well. Another example of coding. Initially, my idea about TTS was model tenure track system, and I would really love to join TTS. Of course, it gives in, it gave in incentives. I was really inspired. But now I feel like joining any system anywhere in Pakistan. So this again, this system or this sentence by another interview talks about pay benefits and uncertainty. This text again talks about benefits. It's, it's from another interviewee. This talks about evaluation mechanism. So I've quoted is it as evaluation. Now previously, in the previous example, here, yeah, this was maybe say interviewee one and they talked about system research pay benefits uncertainty so i identified these quotes moving on in another interview i found the same or more or less the same thing but their perspective was a little different but they were talking about benefits they were talking about uncertainty that the interview uh, interview one was talking about so this is how you code and your code will increase with time or with the with with uh, analysis of more interviewees or the interviews or the data while you are analyzing interviewee one you might have five codes while you start analyzing interview two you might have eight codes three new codes while you are analyzing interview three you might have ten codes eight from previous one and two new ones and those sentences might reappear or might come in different codes. So one code will have multiple quotations, multiple responses from different interviewees. Now, for instance, after doing this, analyzing these 10 interviewees or responses from 10 interviewees, what I did was I identified these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 and 17 codes. After analyzing those 10 interviews, I identified these codes. Each of these codes will have multiple quotations, multiple sentences that come from those interviews. I have grouped those sentences into these codes. So, for example, in interview one was talking about system. Interview two, two talked also talked about inter, uh, system or parallel system, or let's say interview uh, to in order to make it easier, in order to further understand it, something very easy. Okay, let's say pay and benefits. So, interview one talked about pay and benefits in uh, uh, in the universities. Interview two also talked about pay and benefits. Interview 3 did not talk about any pay and benefits, but interview 4 did talk about pay and benefits. So what I'll do is whatever they said about pay and benefits, I'll take those sentences and put them or put those quotations or those sentences under pay and benefits. How to do it in the software? That will come later. Now what I've done is now that, okay, look at these quotes. These are 17, 18 quotes. The next step is you have to identify, can you group these codes just like you do it technically or statistically in exploratory factor analysis, you have to do it manually in uh, qualitative analysis. So what I've done is I've tried to group these codes. Now my grouping is obviously subjective and you sitting in your uh, offices or homes will obviously to a certain extent might disagree with my coding. Because this is this is why we call it subjective analysis. That's the reason it's always recommended that once you group these codes into themes, you take it to experts, you take it to your colleagues and ask them what they think about your coding and what they think about your themes. But what I have done here is 
the next step is once you have identified the codes the next step is that you group these codes into themes so what i have done is i have grouped the codes parallel system service structure reporting mechanism job switch as job structure i have grouped evaluation and promotions as performance management i have grouped research productivity projects fundings and work environment as research and development i have grouped pay benefits retirement pension plans bps salary comparison as incentives and i have grouped uncertainty anxiety stress irresponsibility as job security now it's just not enough to just code them and identify the themes now theme is actually grouping of codes into categories so what you have done is you have identified a parent say parent factor to these codes now you have to define your themes so i've given these definitions uh, let me just do one here job structure job structure focuses issues pertinent to parallel job service structures its reporting mechanism and issues pertinent to job search another example uh, let's say job security job security points to critical job issues that include uncertainty that is leading to anxiety and stress due to irresponsible behavior of university management and higher education body so this is how you define these themes in your study this is very important because you failure to define your themes will actually uh, cause problems when you are actually evaluating these themes linking these themes to your literature or discussing these themes in your thesis or your research paper now we have to relate these themes together it's not just enough to produce the codes it's not just enough to produce the themes it's not just enough to define the themes it's very important that you relate these themes together coding and themes are just part of the analysis this is not the whole analysis what is the interpretation why are these themes important in this particular concept context what do these themes tell us about our research question or the purpose of our research how are these themes significant again why why the, the the aspect of why is particularly important not just to complete your thesis or write discussion it's very important because this is how you elaborate the contribution of your study this will lead to the contribution of your study to the theory as well how are the codes within the themes inter inter interconnected do they contradict or complement each other and finally how are the codes and themes related to your research question this is very important go back go back to your research question and see if your codes are actually relevant to the research questions or the research objective if not then you have to go back to the drawing board uh, sorry drawing board that whether or not you should have actually coded this or not so it's it's an, in in qualitative research you have to go back and forth again and again so this is uh, okay yeah this is where actually we end about qualitative or the concept of qualitative analysis now we will move towards analyzing our data in qda minor light and i'll be taking the question right in the end thank you so moving on uh, the presentation will be shared on the website uh the website address will be shared again and uh, if you haven't uh, subscribed to the channel please do subscribe uh, the channel address will be shared in the chat by umar and uh, the web uh, the the presentation uh, will be shared on the website okay now qda minor light so let's start you can just write and uh, there will be a desktop icon as well or you can just click or start and search qda minor and open it Okay. So what it will ask is, do you want to upgrade or use free edition? In this case, we are using the free edition. Okay, it's uh, so use free edition. Uh, 
Okay, now it is asking us whether we want to create a new project, we want to open an existing project or we want to reopen a recently opened project. So in this case, what we will do is we will create a new project. Now it will ask create a project from a list of document slash images, create a blank project design structure or import from an existing data file. In this case, we will create a project from list of documents and images. So now what you can do is uh, you can import document and images so you can analyze images as well, but that's not part of the process today. Uh, today we are only focusing on the documents. So locate your document where it is. In this case, mine is in. OK, there is one slight problem that if you click uh, the your drive, it won't show the folders here. So it will only show the files. So you will have to locate the folders uh, from this tree structure. So I put it in uh, somewhere here. OK, here are my interviews A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. So what I'll do is you can import all of them or you can import them by one by one. So what I will do is I'll import all these files in the folder. So just select the folder and press import. And here it is asking, do you want to import the word files, text file, HTML files, rich text files or Acrobat reader PDF files. In this case, what document is in or our documents are in word format. So we'll use MS word files, press OK. Do you want to import nine document files? Yes. And create. So it will ask us where do you want to create uh, the project file. So QDA minor light project file will be created. So let's name it. Let's uh, give it a name. Say uh, let's name it system or e-system or education system. Let's save it. And now it's importing might take a bit of a time okay now it is imported now everything is in there now this is your QDA minor light what you see here is this box here is or refers to the cases in your study in this case we've got a b c d e f g h i uh, it, it's always a good idea to rename them and uh, give them proper name then we've got variables. Now every case will have certain variables associated to it. The, it's the file and then the name of the file. It's the document and then it could you could add new variables. So what could be the new variables? Who was the respondent? For example, who was the respondent? You can define the age in this case it could be short string add now it could be for instance uh, what was the age of the respondents you don't need uh, add so this is how you can define the variables pertinent to these cases and then you can obviously add the values here so you can add uh, these values pertinent to each of the case so it could be age gender uh, the type of organization they are working in the organization they are working in so you can define variables pertinent to each of the case below this case you see codes so here you see all your codes defined so let's say we are now we've got this interview or interview you one case a and this is and this is the response that the interview one or interview one actually gave to all the questions okay so the next step is or next thing that we see is codes so how do you define codes let's assume that you have read all these eight or nine cases or all these eight or nine responses from your interviewees now that you have got the gist of the data as to what's in this particular data okay uh, just one thing uh, these are codes and now this is your uh, view where you see the document now this is uh, your document space where you see the the document and the text in the document this is what we call uh, the gutter and uh, this is where you will see the codes or uh, the name of the codes 
So let's say uh, this is the first case and now we want to code it. And let's see we are reading through the document. I've ha I have 8 years of teaching experience in different universities while 6.5 years in experience. Okay, okay. I found a simple all requirements in your sense. The employees BPS don't have confidence. You can easily fulfill the requirements. Okay, okay. now this is something related to the parallel system or system because in here they are comparing uh, the BPS system to the TTS system. So this is something related to system. Now that we, I have read the whole documents or the all the interview documents again and again, I I have got in my mind the th the codes. So I know this is something related to the comparison of system or the parallel systems. So what I can do is I select it here, and in here it says you can uh, this green button here. Just click it. And you can define the code here and let's name it system now you are required to write the theme or category name here now this this might sound troubling to you that okay why should I define theme right at the start where I haven't just finished the coding yet so what you can do is just give a raw or draft theme and once you have finished the coding, you can obviously merge the codes together and change their parent themes as well. So for now, let's say since we read the whole interviews and everything, we know that what we did was system was under job structure. So let's name it as job structure. Now this is your code and this is your category or your theme. And you can uh, give different colors let's say let's give it uh, let's keep it red and you can give it a shortcut as well for now let's keep it simple press ok now here if you look here you have defined a theme job structure and what you have done is you have defined a code called system and in here in the gutter area now you can see that you've got this code here system moving on TTS is not an issue if it's followed in Pakistan with true spirit then it may have many benefits but here people are not aware about the system if you are fit and active then you have to work and if you don't you are not active then leave it so this is something related to benefits that we already identified and let's see how it is so benefits come under incentives so what we we'll do is we can again since it's a new code so what we'll do is benefit is the code name and it will come under a new theme incentives and now look here we've got in benefit and under incentives let's move down I don't think that BPS employees have given more privilege anything like that at least here in obviously uh, we don't let's not name it so it is again related to something related to system. So what we'll do is what we can do is select it and drag your code onto the text. So you've already defined a code for system. You do not need to repeat it or you can select it here system and you can code it or alternatively just drag and drop the code onto this text and you see that now in the gutter area now that you have now you have coded this text or this sentence as system moving on let's take another interview let's let's assume that we have finished this interview or this section or let's say let's do another one okay knowledge let's say this is related to knowledge let's assume and knowledge might come under research and development so right click you can either uh, you can code it as system because it's already selected as system or let's press this plus button here and name it as R&D sorry that was the theme name so you name it as research and development 
rd and code name is let's say knowledge and press ok now you have created another code okay let's go to another example let's go to another interviewee again this code is related to uh, let's say this whole sentence actually relates to system or uh, let's uh, give it another code under the same category so let's say it is service structure for now let's assume it is service structure so what we do is we click this and service structure and it will come under job structure and press ok and now that now look here you've got two codes under job structure now this code actually relates to in to salary and which will come under incentives so we'll do is salary and this will come under a new this will come under sorry we have already defined that theme incentives it's just the new code the theme is already there so we'll press ok now this now have a look what you have done is you've got the theme and then you've got the codes the theme and the codes the theme and the code now let's assume let's do another code for example another interview and another code okay, again this is uh, let's say this text and let's say we've named it as parallel structure or parallel system for instance let's say we have named it parallel system and we have put it in all together in a new code let's say uh, uh, let's uh, say let's uh, uh, procedure let's let's assume this is procedure now what it does is it creates a new theme and a new code now and this is parallel system now the while i was reading through this i found that okay this actually could belong to system here why I, why have i coded it separately so now i think that i should merge parallel system with system so how do i merge codes this is what we talked about earlier that you can merge codes later than when you think that okay these codes could appear together and that's why it's called an iterative process go back and forth again reevaluate your analysis so let's select parallel system codes and merge into so merge parallel system into so i've already selected parallel system again let me do it again so select the code that you do want to merge so select parallel system go to codes and select merge into and i want to merge this parallel system into system here and what i do is i just press okay yes and look here that code is now merged here into the system and now this theme is all alone <clears throat> so this is how you can merge codes generate codes and create themes in qda minor light now the next step is now that i know the keywords in all my data do i need to read again and again or is there any easier way to code so what i do is let's go to retrieval and text retrieval again let's go to retrieval and text retrieval and here it's asking that where do you want to search i want to search in the document fine do you want to search the whole document or separate paragraph sentence or you want to co search the coded segments the things that you have already coded well actually i'm interested in uh, sentence uh, something that is not coded yet so uncoded text segments only for now let's leave it now what do you want to search now what I'll do is let's say I want to search for issue let's say let's 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 go for uh, benefits uh, or 
so if you use or it will search in the sentence any sentence will come up that will either have the text benefits or it could be benefit as well so let's uh, okay let's for now let's use benefits or let's say let's use the word return as well and then we can check the text as well let's search it so what i've got here is in all these nine or ten documents there are 29 sentences where there there is this text benefit tts is not an issue it is followed in pakistan the true uh, spirit that it has many benefits so do you think that this co this particular sentence or this particular uh, uh, quotation or sentence should be coded into this particular code benefit if you think yes this is very relevant so what you do is from this code here select benefit and click code the selected hit now it's coded have a look it was earlier coded as well now so what type of in return well this actually uh, does not mean anything uh, okay what types of knowledge losses in return but well, this is actually related to knowledge and we already had a code on knowledge so what we can do is just select knowledge here and press this now this is coded here look at this this is coded here now let's say this so if you select it actually automatically goes to the particular quotation in your text so yes this actually uh, is related to a particular code yes benefit so you code it and now it's coded so this is how you can automatically uh, use sentences and code them so search for the sentences now this was very plain and simple search but and we used or because benefits and returns could be synonyms or in this case let's see rules it could be rules or procedures is also used as synonym for rules or it could be regulations as well if you want to uh, further know how to use this or and and uh, use that or so go back to that particular video on qda minor light uh, in there there is greater detail i'll be doing more examples as well okay rules or procedures or regulations this is something that is very uh, critical in our analysis because there was a code on it so let's search so we've got eight hits on so there are eight actually sentences that have used the word rules procedures or regulations but let's change it a bit it could be rules or it could be rules so we we will use a wild card asterisk the wild card is asterisk it could be procedure or procedures it could be regulation or regulations so what we'll do is we'll use asterisk and then we'll press the search again and now we've got 20 hits so this is the importance of using this uh, wildcard character because uh, somebody might have referred it to as a procedure or procedures now let's see let's click this and it goes to the sentence do you think that this is important in your study well i don't think so so i won't code it let's go to another sentence this sentence here so once i click it goes to the sentence automatically according to my opinion there are some minor problems in the transition period uh, okay uh, the main reason for the occurrence is that they don't have defined set of rules and again this is very important but this should go into job structure as a new code so i'll press this plus button here and i'll name it rules and it will come under job structure and i'll press ok and now see this new code is created and add it now it is added do not just like define the new code add the quotation to the code as well so now it's added to the rules now this is how you can search for the text and code it you can use and as well for example a sentence that has got uh, both benefits 
or something for example if i want to quote about say incentives or i let's say i want to quote about knowledge so a, a sentence that has got a research the whole phrase and development for instance now in this case you should separate uh, the space with underscore or you can put it in quotation marks so both are correct and let's see search so you've got zero hits on research but in most cases it would be rather like this not research development but research and development so let's see if we've got research and development again zero hits so let's change research and development so a sentence that has got both these words research and development search and obviously there is nothing so but again this is how you should use and operator instead of or if you are looking for phrases that come together in a single sentence or maybe in a single paragraph or maybe in a single document it, it, this 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 could be any search unit so if you want two phrases or two words coming together in a single sentence or in a single paragraph or in a single document you can do it by using the and operator so this is how you use the wildcard character, the AND operator or the OR operator to search for text in your documents. If you've got, uh, if you're search, writing literature, again, uh, I, I won't be going back to that. Uh, so you can you watch that video uh, and it will be shared again onto the, uh, the Facebook page. So you can obviously watch that later again and that can be a significant help in your literature review I, I, I it will cut down your literature review timing into maybe like if it previously took you 10 hours it will now take you 2.5 hours because you can directly go into the information that you are looking for so this is how you can use this text retrieval option in QDA minor light and code the relevant text that you want to study or that you want your um, uh, to be part of your study as quotes now there is another thing that you can do let's do that let's say i've quoted a few things here let's go to let's click right click and go to retrieve segments if you want to know what you have coded so what you do is you just go to right click and retrieve segments and in this case so there are there is this one code here Let's see what we've got in system, retrieve segments. Okay, I've got three codes here. I think while I was going through the document, I think this one particular code is not important. It's actually not relevant. So what I can do is I can either delete it or change its coding here. So what I'll do is I want this to go into knowledge. So I'll click knowledge and then from here I can remove it. So now it's gone into knowledge now this is how you can uh, just hold on let me uh, have a look at it again service structure and uh, okay so this is how you can obviously change uh, the codes so just right click on it retrieve or uh, okay now yes so here we are and the benefit now these two are actually coded and the same these are the same quotations so why do why do we want to have same quotations so what we can do is just right click remove coding and this is related to benefit and you can put it into another code as well or sorry uh, yes another code and another in another theme and then you can dilute it from uh, here as well under the category incentives under the category or sorry the code benefit so if you want to delete it just right click and uh, remove it you can save the code as well separately or copy to clipboard now this is how you code this is how you group the codes merge the codes search the codes and uh, furthermore you can have coding frequencies as well for example let's say i want to have a look at all these codes and their frequencies and how they search and see 
now there are two quotations here one in this one two in this one two in this one one in this one and knowledge has got three the percentage of quotes the number of cases that they, these quotes are coming from and just the descriptive statistics relevant to your quotations and quotes in order to get this just go to retrieval uh, sorry analyze and coding frequencies and you can obviously uh, go to the document and change how the coded text appears does it appear normal does it appear as highlight does it appear as dim it will be dimmed here see now it's dim and text view uh, this is these are different views that you can play with actually uh, you can obviously whatever suits you, you can hide the text mask the text and go into settings uh, font color let's say let's go to purple and you can change the background colors as well code colors background or font okay and go to document or text or colors now see now it is changed so this this is something that you can work on and you can change the document obviously uh, work on the document or change the formatting of the document if you want to another feature uh, that you can do is you can search in the document using this find or this binoculars as well you can check the grammar as well if you want um, you can create changes or change the document as well by creating table you can find whatever you want to you can match the whole world or you can just match the case as well direction up or up and down so this is something uh, that you can use qda minor light to create your codes to create the categories merge the codes uh, color your codes analyze the codes identify the coding frequencies so something that you can work and you can then print the code book as well so just what you can do is just right click and go to print code book uh, if you want to give it a title and print it at as uh, if you want just or uh, select your printer and whatever and just print and it will do the printout or go to the pdf document that you can uh, open and uh, later you uh, for later use so this is how you can use qda minor light for your qualitative data analysis so now let me go through an example of how to write or a sample chapter on how to produce results of your qualitative study this is something i did uh, a while ago just hold on let me share the screen Okay, here is a document that uh, actually I did uh, on stakeholder issues. So briefly, you describe your chapter as to what is included in the chapter. And then followed by this, what you do is you write your themes and then the codes in the themes. And do not just put in the quotations from your results. Briefly describe your codes. As to what is meant by the code you can put in the definition of the theme as well and then once you are putting in once you have put in the codes as to what is meant by the codes you write about or write the responses from the your interviews but do not just put in the quotations you briefly describe as to what is meant by the quotation what is meant by the sentence that you are putting in your document and do not just put in the document then you can obviously describe that quotation as well and then you can use these words like similarly however contradicting a2 or a1 or the respondent 1 or respondent 2 so these words or words like this will actually help build a more strong uh, literature uh, sorry uh, 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 qualitative analysis chapter now this is uh, bank reputation another code in the theme of benefits so in reputation there will be quotations pertinent to reputation so each code will have multiple quotations and each quotation is uh, briefly is, is is preceded by a description as to what the, the the quotation is about and then what it means to your analysis you can have a separate discussion chapter or you can merge the discussion with the literature or the theory in the same chapter 
so this actually depends on the structure or how you or your how your supervisor wants it so this is how you can structure your qualitative analysis chapter briefly introduce the chapter then write the themes and within themes write the quotes and while you are putting the quotes and then the quotation in the in in those particular quotes do not just put in the text from the 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 interviews describe those quotations as well as to as to what is meant by those quotations that you are putting in in those quotes i hope uh, this would have uh, cleared some of the misconceptions uh, with regards to writing uh, the results of a qualitative analysis i hope the session would have helped you understand the concept of qualitative data analysis and how to use qda minor light for qualitative data analysis now i'll be taking the questions thank you very much